Other than part one, the only available episode of the four-part Doctor Who classic The Crusade serial is, is episode three. It's pretty good. The most interesting aspect of this episode is the relationship, the, the disagreements between Richard and his sister Joanna. Unfortunately, I mean, I guess one could expect, you know, given this serial is called The Crusade, a series of, you know, kind of a more adventurous or action-packed sort of narrative, but rather it's about court intrigue amongst in, in the crusader state of Jaffa and there's also some you know some stuff with Saladin and his brother they're not nearly as interestingly or well defined they're kind of portrayed as kind of not necessarily just wicked kind of characters but one note it's a serial that it, it could have been a lot in the way of I don't know you you, you, you I guess you would imagine something more more gung-ho and action-packed with with the crusade one is kind of glad that it's it's not, you know, exploiting what is ultimately a fairly it's, it's tragic and disgusting historical event and all that, whatever, not whatever, but, you know, um, you can, you can kind of be glad that it's not as, as violent and glorifying of, 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 of a kind of, you know, imperialistic era, if you will, and conquest and all this such, which we look down upon now, rightfully so. But yeah, I, I guess turning this into kind of court intrigue, and then the Doctor certainly seems to uh, name his his intent and his role in this story is is you know balancing a relationship between two two different royals. Just to take it, make of it what you will. It's fairly good at that, mind you. I'll say that. Hey, if you don't know much about uh, Richard the Lionheart, I'll read some of that out here. Richard the First, eighth of September, eleven fifty seven. He was born and he died on the 6th of April, 1199. He was king of England from 1189 until his death in 1199. He also ruled as Duke of Normandy, Aquitaine, and Gascony, Lord of Cyprus, and Count of Poitiers, Anjou, Maine, and Nantes, and was over Lord of Brittany at various times during the same period. Yeah, Brittany's actually, it's, it's nothing to do with Britain. Brittany is a, is a historical county and cultural area in the west of modern France covering what was known as America during the Roman occupation. What is it now? Nantes, Rennes, Brest. Okay. Yeah, there it is in the, the right in the northeast of France, the northwest of France there. there you go. Excuse me. Uh, he was the third of five sons of King Henry II of England and Eleanor of Aquitaine and seemed unlikely to become king, but all his brothers except the youngest, John, predeceased their father. Richard is known as Richard Coeur de Lion, Le Coeur de Lion, or Richard the Lionheart because of his reputation as a great military leader and warrior. The troubadour Bertrand de Born also called him Richard Oxenon, Ossetian for yes and no, possibly from a reputation for terseness. By the age of 16, Richard had taken command of his own army, putting down rebellions in Poitoy against his father. Richard was an important Christian commander during the Third Crusade, leading the campaign after the departure of Philip II of France and achieving considerable victories against his Muslim counterpart Saladin, although he finalised a peace treaty and ended the campaign without retaking Jerusalem. Richard probably spoke both French and Ossetan. He was born in England, where he spent his childhood before becoming king. However, he lived most of his adult life in the Duchy of Aquitaine in the southwest of France. Following his accession, he spent very little time, perhaps as little as six months, in England. Most of his life as king was spent on crusade, in captivity, or actively defending his lands in France. Rather than regarding his kingdom as a responsibility requiring his presence as ruler, he has been perceived as preferring to use it merely as a source of revenue to support his armies. Nevertheless, he was seen as a pious hero by his subjects. He remains one of the few kings of England remembered more commonly by his epithet than his re reg regional, regional number and is, enduring, and is an enduring iconic figure both in England and in France. Now that the history is out of the way, let's talk about the filming of this particular serial, The Crusade. Early 35mm stock filming took place on the 16th to the 18th of February 1965 on the sound stages of BBC Television Film Studios. Russell was released from rehearsals for Invasion, the fifth episode of the preceding serial, The Web Planet, to perform action sequences on the 16th of February to accommodate for his holiday during the filming of the third episode. The first action sequence, a fight with a Saracen warrior, was choreographed by fighter ranger Derek Ware. For a shot in which Ants advanced upon Ian in the fourth episode, it assistant floor manager Mike Lee Bryant arranged for the supply of 75 black ants from, the London, from London Zoo. 
Russell refused to perform a shot in which the ants move up Ian's arm to his hand. Canfield's production assistant, Victor's Ritalist, doubled for Russell instead. Hill was released from rehearsals for Invasion on the 18th of February to film for the serial. Rehearsals for the first episode began on the 1st of March 1965. Weekly filming began in Studio One at Riverside Studios on the 5th of March 1965. For the first episode, a trained hawk was supplied by John Holmes of the former Can Animal Centre in Benson, Oxfordshire. O'Brien was absent from rehearsals for the second episode on the 11th of March to film for the subsequent serial, The Space Museum, 1965. Russell was absent from filming the third episode as he was on holiday. The establishing shot of a desert in the third episode was sourced from 9 feet, 2.7 minutes meters of silent 35 millimeter stock footage supplied by the ABPC Film Exchange. During recording of the final episode on the 26th of March, Lemko injured himself with a knife which went to a finger bone in his right hand. He was taken to hospital for a tetanus shot. Camfield arranged for a cow carcass to be present during recording in order to achieve particular shots through the rotting rib cage. The carcass attracted flies and emitted an odour beneath the studio lights. Fun. I think that'll do for today. Tune in next time if you'd like to see an assessment of the missing episode 4 of The Crusade, if you're so inclined.